None taken. <laughs> so how, I mean, you've been outspoken about the Trump administration's position on immigration, on, on a number, I mean, these things are gonna collide in government and business, right? Yeah. It's happening now. Yeah. So what, what do you want these future business leaders to do about it once they get into that spot? Get the money. Get the money, and then let's get around a table and let's create new rules. Literally that simple. Get the fucking money. I'm serious, do not get it. It is gonna be made, it is going to be allocated, and you have a moral imperative to make sure that if you have a point of view that matters and you wanna reflect it, you get it. I'm gonna go get it. Other people are gonna go get it. And then it will be about a competition of views. And don't wrap yourself in all this like, you know, liberal kind of bullshit about like, oh my God, uh, money, blah. No, stop. Here's how the fucking world works, okay? It drives the world for better or for worse. Economic incentives drive entire swaths of populations to behave in very, very predictable, and then when you, when you uh, take it away, unpredictable ways. Ask anybody in your class that's from a developing nation. Ask anybody in your class like who has seen that play out from where they're from. So that's what you have to do. You gotta go and get it. If you control the capital and you have a point of view, you can now, then the question is, don't be a sellout. Whatever your worldview is, you should be spending time to think about what that is so that when you control some of these purse strings, you push that view into the world. I will never judge you, and you should not judge me for what that worldview is. But the point is, the more diversity of those views, the more rational actors we have, and the more of a balanced, fair system. That is what diversity really means to me. It doesn't mean like, let's manage back to a quota. You know, it doesn't mean like, okay, we need a black guy, a brown guy, we need a few. Like, that's not what it means. This is what it means, right? There are people in this audience that have probably dealt with the same kind of like life that I've dealt with. You have a very unique worldview that matters. And in the absence of capital, you're irrelevant. With capital, you're powerful. And then you decide in small ways, in medium-sized ways, in large ways, right? It just depends on the scale of capital that you have. And so that's what's necessary now in capitalism, which is that we have to come back to like, what is it really? Is it an economic system? Yes, but it, it is a philosophy as well, right? And it's a philosophy that says, we will vote for the change we intend based on the views that we have. And when you look at the most successful people that operate in these tentacles, that's what they do. Look at the Koch brothers. That's what they do. They have built a network of influence based on capital. Their worldview is propagated into the world at an unbelievably aggressive rate that has been compounding for decades. That is genius. It is genius. It doesn't matter whether you agree with their worldview. The question is, what's the counterweight to their worldview? Can you name one? Can you name a group of people that operate in the exact same way, methodically, meticulously assembling capital, influence, assets, who believe the opposite? Irrespective of what you think of the Cokes, you want both views out in the world, at scale. Well, right now you have this and you don't have this. And there are many examples of that. And so get the money and don't lose your, um, moral compass when you do. You've said that you think VC is a horrendous allocator of capital. So if we need to go get the capital, how do we do it better? Um, well, we're chipping away. I think other people will copy us. Um, you know, venture is basically just a bunch of soulless cowards. Um, <laughs> you know, like they're all, they're all just kind of, you know, look, they're well-intentioned. Um, but they're well-intentioned, soulless cowards. 
they have fallen for what everybody else falls for, which is not, which is, which you can't blame them for, which is here is this gold star. And they're like, wow, I've gotten a gold star. And then the minute you do that, what you do is you start to just choke it really tight. And you're like, I don't want to lose this gold star. And then what happens? You go risk off. And then what happens? Your behaviors are about protecting the seat of power that you have, the social definition that that, that seat affords you. And so now, instead of being an accelerant of a progressive worldview, you become a retardant to a progressive worldview, right? Your risk appetite shrinks. The surface area in which you're willing to make decisions shrink. You, so you, 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 and when you are a critical part of the future, again, going back to how I started, the most important part of capitalism is going to be the folks that are driving the technological change. Well, as a class, that's what VCs are supposed to do. But they're, by and large, in my opinion, the wrong people. So how do we do it? You have to make it more systematic. You have to make it more data-driven. You have to strip out the bias. Um, you have to be open 24-7. You know, you can't have these dumb rules of like, oh, I only do deals if they're like within 15, you know, miles driving distance. Like, how can the most important part of, like, I, it's, <laughs> I mean, did you, did you, can you imagine if I walked in to Zuck's office, Facebook board, I'm like, I have a great fucking idea. Facebook is only going to be open for business Monday through Friday, um, 10 to 5, kids want to get home. Summers, we're going to take off. And so we're just going to show like a 404 page. And it's like, I mean, does it make sense? <laughs> like, or like Google. You know, you, we only want you to search during business hours. <laughs> and so you, know, you ha you, so you have to be open for scale. You have to be global. You have to do all of these things so that you can get the money into the hands of the people that deserve it and then help them. And by helping them, what you have to do is actually address the core structural parts of business building that are not done well today. And the best analog is AWS. If you were starting a business 15 years ago, I can even tell you a decade ago, we were racking servers in our data center because the growth was great. And somewhere along the way, Amazon said, you know what? All of that complexity is necessary, but it's not sufficient to building Facebook or any other great company. So let me abstract that for you. Let me go and replace all of those good people with an API. And I'll take those good people, and they'll be celebrated at Amazon. And initially, a few people said yes. And you know, people thought in 2007, AWS was a joke. And we used to laugh at it. We're like, why would anybody do this stuff? And now see how fast a decade later, you're on the other side of the fence. If any, come, any of you guys start a business and you're not on AWS, you would be the joke, right? So what did they do? They basically said, here's all this stuff that's necessary to building a business. You need to do it. You probably don't want to do it. You're probably not going to do it well. And so let me just replace it all with an abstraction. Your company can be smaller, leaner, more efficient. And now the money you raise can be used for things that approximate core product value better. OK, now in 2017, ask the same question. What's the next set of things that make sense? And in my opinion, what we uncovered at Facebook is what every company needs, which is how do you shift from an anecdotal, political capital, social capital oriented way of making decisions inside a company to a very precise, unemotional, data driven process. And the way you do it is by building a bunch of data infrastructure, by collecting a bunch of data itself, by helping you optimize your business in a bunch of obvious and non-obvious ways. And so what we believe is that we should take that capability that, that my team built at Facebook and abstract it for all of you who intend to start a company. So now in the future, what should happen is you'll go to AWS, you'll get some infrastructure, you'll go to socialcapital.com, and you'll get some insights and knowledge. And it's all interacting via APIs. It's all in, in, interacting via endpoints and primitives. And what happens is we can now learn from the feedback from your data how you're doing. We can merge those learnings across many, many other businesses. We can find things in some remote part of some company over here and translate that as value for you over here. Wouldn't you want that? Of course you'd want that. You know, what if we could do more efficient customer acquisition? What if we could figure out churn better? What if we... So all of these things now are what we are going to bring to the market. 
systematic capabilities. And I think over time, what that does is, again, it moves to a much more progressive view of what capitalism should be. It's not the few that matched a human-driven pattern, but it's more about taking big shots, scaling up the money, being able to support people in structurally predictable ways, and allowing them to build better companies. Those companies, I suspect, will be as profitable, but they'll be smaller, they'll be more efficient, they'll have more revenue per head, all the things that you would want over time so that instead of having four or five mega companies, you could have millions and millions and millions of smaller, better run companies. Um, and that's my worldview. And I think if we do that, we achieve our goals, we kind of focus on hard, pro like all of that stuff comes together if we enable that. So what you're seeing from us is that. And it's really upsetting and disconcerting to the established sort of venture classes because it upends how they've defined their value. It's a very classic inventor's dilemma. Right? They are like, in my brain is pattern recognition. But we know that that's not true. And the data shows you that that's not true. You know, a simple question for all of you guys that love the lore of Silicon Valley. From the 70s, when Microsoft was founded, to now, if you look at all the major companies that have been created, major, say, over 50 billion, over 60 billion, what percentage of the Series A investors overlapped? You did the A of Microsoft, and you did the A of Google, or you did the A of Uber, right? Like we're pattern recognition, again, you know, it's non-numerical, right? It's about like, wow, I like the cut of this guy's jib, you know? <laughs> well, the, the answer is it's, it's less than 2%. So what does that mean? Everybody's bullshitting. That's what it really means, right? If you're in a seat and you have good deal flow, and you have precious capital, and there's a massive tailwind of technological change, over time, you get one of the 20, and you look like a genius. That's basically what's happened. And nobody wants to admit that. But that's the fucking truth. 